um, and that was designed to unnerve people as much as to damage aeroplanes. These designs, lifted from secret engineering blueprints seized by the Allies at the end of the war, show just how radical the Nazis' aerospace programs were. And it was plans like these that were unsettling the Allied forces. Going through American files of the kind of technological plunder operation that they did on Germany after the war, they do describe technologies that could be pieced together to develop a kind of Foo Fighter type weapon. They were working on all these bizarre little things, but none of these things ever came to, to fruition. Had the, the war gone on much longer, or had the Germans won, then we may have seen th these things develop in the same way that we saw the Americans develop uh, space technology after the war. The evidence for Foo Fighters is intriguing, but I wonder whether there is anything more than the log reports by the pilots who described screaming dogfights with strange balls of light. I've come to meet American technology historian John Dering. He has first-hand information on the development of Foo Fighters. I interviewed a German aircraft engineer who had actually worked on these vehicles in the prototype stage and in the early phases of production. Uh, these were vehicles that were unmanned. They were what we would probably best describe today as unmanned aerial combat vehicles. These were vehicles that were not just sent up for surveillance purposes, they actually had a purpose of remotely controlled to engage the, the Allied aircraft, the bombers in particular, by basically trying to apply a mechanism that was not necessarily a catastrophic destructive effect such as blowing the Foo Fighter up and taking the aircraft down. This was intended to be something that could be reused multiple times. There's plenty of anecdotal evidence that Allied air crewmen saw these things over Germany, but what about hard evidence on the ground that, that this technology was actually pursued by the Germans? One of the uh, reports that I have seen and looked over was in reference to a project in the Black Forest that involved a small vehicle that was specifically intended to be an interceptor for advanced uh, uh, air defense against Allied bombers. Now that document actually came from a U.S. intelligence officer and so I have pretty high certainty that that was real. I want to follow up on John Dering's research. His work indicates there was secret technology being developed in Nazi-occupied Central Europe which might account for some of the UFO sightings. These are the Sudeten Mountains on the Polish-Czech border. During World War II, this beautiful valley was home to some of the finest scientific minds of the Third Reich. It was here that the Nazis built one of their underground research facilities, the Wenceslas Mine. I'm meeting Polish military historian Igor Witkowski, who will guide me round the mine, a vast underground complex hidden away from Allied bombs, which Nazi slave labor carved out of the Sudeten Mountains. The example of a perfect infrastructure to kind of reflection Here, in the desperate last months of the war, that German scientists worked around the clock to produce Kriegensscheiden the war-winning technology that might produce a stunning knockout blow, even as the Nazis were being pushed back towards Germany. As Igor guided me through the flooded tunnels, the air became heavy and difficult to breathe. So in effect, we've come hundreds of meters through this complex. And we're now deep into the mountain. Not hundreds of meters, but several kilometers, in fact. This, several kilo this, this is several, several kilometers. kilometers into the mountain. Yes. And this would have been a highly secure, impenetrable yes. assembly site. Exactly. And uh, the secrecy around this place was, was uh, very exceptional, so that uh, the Allies never found, found out about it. Almost nothing exists of the original mine. 
As the Nazis retreated in 1945, they sealed most of the tunnels, leaving the advanced technology, and some say the scientists who developed it, buried beneath impenetrable walls of rock. But the Allies did capture one man who knew all about this place, and he wasn't a token find. His name was SS General Jakob Sporenberg, and he was in charge of the technical program at the mine. What he revealed astonished his interrogators. Indeed, I find it astonishing 60 years later. He spoke of a secret experiment attempting nothing less than to conquer gravity. He described a bell-shaped device that needed enormous amounts of electrical power. It was made of a hard, heavy metal and filled with a mercury-like substance that was violet in color and glowed when under test. People who worked on the bell suffered from sleep problems and severe vertigo. Five of the seven scientists died while working on the project. In a memo to Hitler, the scientists wrote, It is in our opinion that the scientific results ascertained from our experiments with the bell are truly decisive for the war. Experiments with the bell happened deep underground in the mine, but directly above it, on the surface, was this strange structure. Called the flytrap, it first showed up on an Allied aerial reconnaissance photo in 1944. Igor Witkowski believed that the flytrap was a test rig for advanced propulsion technology. In other words, flying saucers. There is an extremely strong and thick steel reinforcement of the pillars, which means that uh, it was to be, to withstand some great forces working on it. How did it work? We don't know exactly, but we do know from Sporenberg's evidence that the bell was a revolutionary device and the flytrap, designed as its test rig, was fed with underground cables running to the heart of the structure. So, so the cabling led down here, right away the fr from the power station over there. Yes, up to the up to the flytrap. Right. Uh, it was. Uh, well, they're actually visually filled with a uh, high voltage yeah. cable, uh, as thick as an arm. Right. You know, that, that, that thickness, I, I have a photographs of, of, uh, of them, and uh, that's just the another strange fact that uh, point out to such a possibility that it would have been used to, for some experimental purposes. I mean, they're actually pretty sizable. It's kind of like a meter and a half of, yes, uh, of concrete line ducting down here. Yes, exactly. Pretty solid. So it all adds up to, I mean, pretty strong evidence that the power station over there was just was feeding this tremendous amount of power to the uh, to the facility, the flytrap over there. Just there, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, it's a very strange. What Witkowski has uncovered is interesting. I've spent a long time researching the quest to produce anti-gravity technology, the holy grail of aerospace design. Is it possible that the UFO sightings over Nazi Germany? were related to this quest. There is a sense here that the Germans were engaged in very highly classified work and that possibly they were engaged in anti-gravity type programs. What I do know is that many of these bizarre projects like the Bell did not remain in German hands. At the end of the war, they were plundered secretly by the American High Command and taken to the States. The 
the speculation about Foo Fighters was about to be overshadowed by one of the most sensational UFO sightings of all, the 1947 incident at Roswell in New Mexico.